Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron LeGrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Mentor, an ongoing series of podcasts conducted to help you make more money, make it faster, make it easier without risk, and retire rich. I have with me today Mr. Jay Connor, who for a return visit, but his subject uh, this time is going to be how he uh, finds and, and uh, helps people that are in foreclosure and makes a lot of money while doing it and also uh, assists a lot of people out of a situation they'd rather not be in. Jay's got a very unique system that he's going to explain here on this podcast to do that. And a little bit about Mr. Connor. He lives in North Carolina. Uh, and his whole, in, his whole marketing area is only 40,000 people. And here's the good part. This man has made seven figures annually since coming into my world eight or nine years ago, still does to this very day, and tells me he works about 10 hours a week at it. And I know he's full of baloney because I can't see what he's doing that even takes up 10 hours. Welcome, Mr. Jay Connor. How are you, sir? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ron, for having me here on the podcast. Uh, last time we were together, I really enjoyed uh, talking with you about the, the private money and getting unlimited funding for our deals. And wow, excited today to talk about, uh, whenever we get around to it, about the foreclosure system that uh, my wife, Carol Joy, and I created and are still enjoying the uh, benefits of it today. Well, uh, you know, you, we did have a conversation about private money. And by the way, if you guys didn't hear that, you can go back and retrieve it because these are all posted. Uh, private money, of course, was to help fund the kind of deals that we're going to be discussing today. And that is people that are in foreclosure. So why don't we get right into it and talk about this and system that you guys did invent and create and uh, is still out there today. And by the way, when this is when we're through, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to get an online training from Jay. It's about an hour and a half where he goes step by step uh, uh, and teaches you what he does. And, you know, I got a list of people, a growing list of people who make seven figures annually, Jay. But I can't remember anybody that actually went home and did it their first year other than you. And wow. you, you told me that the reason is you actually just went home and did what you were told to do and then <laughs> try to reinvent the wheel, which immediately makes you an unusual male species. <laughs> men will just don't follow instructions, Jay. And if it's working correctly, it must be fixed. Mm, That's a man yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, t talk to me. What uh, What's the system all about? Sure, sure. Well, I'll just emphasize for a second what you just said. You know, um, for example, you know, I, I learned when I first went to your quick start boot camp over nine years ago, the, I never heard of, you know, the kind of marketing that you did and yellow letters and what yellow letters are and other kinds of marketing. And so I was in the class and I would, I overheard someone else saying about that yellow letter saying, you know, I think I can do this, or I think I can do that, and I can make it better, et cetera. I think I need to include my business card in that letter, et cetera. And so I heard you say in class over nine years ago, don't change a thing about what I'm teaching you. Do exactly what I tell you, and don't try to make it better because it's already proven to work. So that is exactly what I did, Ron. I, uh, I trusted you. I trusted the system. And guess what? The system works. So I just didn't try to go fix things. I just, you know, plug and played. Like I said, man, you're weird. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Well, and I'll tell you another big thing too was was the focus. The focus. I uh, I I'd you know, never heard of private money until you told me about it, and so I had a lot of motivation to kick that in. And so um, the, the the focus aspect of it was really really big as well. But nonetheless. Well, focus um, is a lot easier when you understand automation and systemization, which you actually did take several years to develop. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we were developing it simultaneously at the same time you were, and that's how we got so automated and systemated today to where, honestly, this business has never, ever, ever been easier in the 36 years that I've been in, I can tell you that. Because right. there's very little to do, which is why you only work, you say, 10 hours a week. Well, I'd be hard pressed to give a full accounting of that. You know, sometimes people will ask me, they'll say, uh, Jay, what do you do? 
in your yeah, buying right. and selling house business. Mm -hmm. And I set out when I first came to your boot camp, I said, I said, you know what? As quickly as I can, I want to do and be able to do what Ron Legrand does. And that is I want to make decisions. Yep. I want to look at property lead sheets. I want to decide what am I going to offer on it get the team sent out to, you know, to, uh, you know, take it from there. And so, yeah, um, you've heard me say it. <laughs> you've heard me say it before. And that is my focus is to dictate, delegate and disappear. That's what I, I do. <laughs> and I like the three D's. And, and so anyway, you've mastered those three D's. Yes. And yes. that's saying, okay, same thing. Let's talk about this system. We better get to it. We're running out of time here. Oh, got an eight letter series. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk from the beginning to end, guide me through that series. Sure. What the results are. Right. So Carol Joy and I started putting the, this system together years ago, and there's two primary uh, parts, working parts of the system that make it happen. The first part is tracking every open foreclosure file from public records from the time the file is opened, and of course, when that file is opened, uh, the triggering mechanism depends on your state. Most states either have a notice of default that the substitute trustee has the, uh, has the, uh, has the uh, local sheriff deliver or a summons. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the two categories, tracking them from the time the file is opened until the file is dismissed, and by the way, when someone files bankruptcy, that is not a definition of dismissed. The file is still open. We track them. Unfortunately, people that file bankruptcy are not able to make the judge's um, monthly payment that's been determined in the bankruptcy court, and they come back up for sale again. So one category, tracking them, keeping up with all of them. And then secondly, is the marketing system, the eight-letter direct mail system uh, or letters that are sent out every uh, third business day apart. And of course, when someone responds to one of those eight letters, then we stop mailing. But that's, of course, there's lots of details that go, goes with that. But those are the two categories that make the system work. And of course, <laughs> I could spend a lot of time talking about that. So let me let you ask the questions that you think the listeners would really want to hear about here in the podcast. And I'll well, let's start. From, let's start from the beginning. Okay. First of all, you've got to get these this information about these uh, people that are in foreclosure, which incidentally is public information. You can't file a foreclosure without it being public in any mm -hmm. anywhere in the country. Um, now, you can get this information. A lot of people can get it right online because they can tap into their county website. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get it in your yep. town of 40,000 people? Right. So we still get it today in our county the same way we started getting it years ago, and here's how. And I'll tell you why we haven't gone to the online service or services in our area. <clears throat> First of all, my wife, Carol Joy, she was the one that started out going to the courthouse. So, and of course, now we have our courthouse assistant that goes to the courthouse and opens, gets the information on every open file, and then updates the information on our Excel spreadsheet as to the other files that have you know, already opened and have not gone to sale yet and haven't been closed. So Carol Joy started out going twice a week, and that's what our courthouse assistant still does. And we might Good. point out, I mean, it ain't like there's that many foreclosures in, in a week. I don't care where you live, you're still talking about a handful of people. Correct. And so I'm glad you brought that up because at any given time, we are tracking between 275 and 300 files which are not that many, and here's, in other words, our courthouse assistant is not looking at 300 files twice no. a week. That's not what she's doing. She's opening a file on the new ones, and then she's just tracking, okay, when's the hearing date, when's the sale date, and of course, she's getting, well, when did that mortgage open, so, the mortgage amount, yeah. and who's the substitute trustee? So, we uh, now here's why we do not rely on the internet for this information. To begin with, we do not rely on the internet for the foreclosures that are new or any updates because since we go actually go to the courthouse twice a week, we get the information before the rest of the world gets it. Now, 
in our and that's important because I want to be able to get up with the people that are in foreclosure distress before the other real estate investors even knows this file exists. So in our county, I know there's nobody else because we're in and out of there all the time. There's nobody else that are tracking the records like we do, and we immediately get all the update information. Now, in our county, the internet foreclosures are actually only made available. We're still like archaic. <laughs> only made available to the attorneys if they subscribe to the courthouse uh, records. But in big cities, uh, you can, you know, you can subscribe to these yeah, well, mo mo most big cities most cities of any size nowadays you can go online and get this information but of course somebody's got to go do that work exactly it, really, it really isn't much harder to go down the courthouse and get it right off first first hand exactly now and i, so I want to point out to everybody jay mm -hmm. uh, okay so we got to send somebody to the courthouse that doesn't mean you're going to the courthouse correct uh, that means you send somebody for a very small amount of money to go do this grunt work at the courthouse yeah. And since they're doing it twice a week, I, I, I used to use title clerks to people who actually work for title companies. Okay, there you go. They do it anyway. They do it anywhere and they're there anyway. So, yeah, they, they don't cost much. Yeah. Yeah, we pay $75 a week to our courthouse assistant to keep the records current. So, you know, for $300 and some pennies a month, We've got mm -hmm. all the records current, and you know she enjoys it, and it's it's a part time thing. That she's actually a postal carrier is is her full time work, and she really? does this courthouse thing for us on the side. Well, there you go. I mean, what is that? That's one night out at the clubhouse there in Moorhead City, North Carolina, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> to the Dunes Club. <laughs> right, to the Dunes That's Club. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So you get the information from the courthouse. Does this person incorporate it into the spreadsheet, or does somebody in your office do that? No, she does. So uh, she does. she's got our okay. spreadsheet on her laptop there you go. And, uh, and, and and keeps that current so, for us. And so, so she pulls a handful of files a week and sits down on her laptop before she even leaves and inserts the information and she's done. Exactly. And so then she gives me a weekly report of the status of the files that we're tracking. So, you know, I want to see, all right, when's the hearing date coming up? When's the sale date coming up? Uh, of course, North Carolina is sort of a weird state. Very few states, not at all like Florida. In North Carolina, we have this weird thing called the 10-day upset period, <laughs> which means we used to have uh, it. And you, I know you've heard me talk about it and you're familiar with it, but mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. can come in and upset the bids. But anyway, that's sort of beside the point on, uh, on this well, one. What you mean is they got 10 days after the sale to redeem it? No. Anybody can come in. But yes. Yes. The owner can come in and redeem it, but that's not primarily what it's not used for. What it's, that is not what it's used for. The 10 day upset period is where anybody can come in within the next 10 calendar days, calendar days. And bid more, and, huh? And upset the current bid by at least 5% or more. And now they're in first position as far as winning the bid, but that restarts the clock. Then it yeah. goes 10 more days. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's a different wow, deal. Okay. Different deal. All right. yeah. So you do have a weird law. We do. We yeah. do have a weird law. Um, so there's so there's the tracking of them. Now, once we open a file, now the eight-letter direct mail campaign starts. Okay. Okay. And so you, then it comes and it goes right out of your office. Somebody in there does the handful. Actually, we right? have a retired lady that is uh -huh. our preacher's mother. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was a uh, was a corporate secretary for years. She was sitting at home bored, and so once a week, she stop on Mondays. She stops by our office, picks up the the new list of um, people to mail to, which are on an Excel spreadsheet, and then she keeps up with okay, we're on letter one, letter two, letter three, etc. And then when our virtual assistant, see, this is how the automation works. When our virtual assistant that talks to uh, sellers, also known as our acquisitionist, when our acquisitionist gets a telephone call from response to these letters, then the uh, acquisitionist sends an email to our retired lady assistant that's in charge of mailing out the foreclosure letters and says, hey, we got a response, so stop mailing. So <laughs> I got to be totally transparent, Ron. I do get a 57% on average response to these eight letters, but the 57% response rate does include 
vulgarity. <laughs> 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 All right, explain. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yes, someone will call up and say, you know, uh, you know, blankety blank, you know, take me off your list, uh, you know, leave me alone, you know, uh, who in the world, blankety blank, do you think you are? The good news is because of the reputation we've established in our area for so long, and particularly on Facebook and et cetera, most people know that we are there to serve. And and this is real important, Ron. Let me take just just less than 20 seconds and explain the mindset of me, my wife, and our team. You know, we as real estate investors sometimes get a bad rap, in my opinion. The some, you know, taking advantage of people. Uh, give me a break. Here is here is me and my entire team's outlook in the real estate investing business, whether we're buying a house or selling a house. And that is we are here to serve. We are here to help solve people's problems. And do you know what? When someone responds to one of our letters, after we build a little rapport and, you know, talk to them for a moment, one of the first questions we ask these people in foreclosure is, do you want to keep your house? And if they say yes, we do tell them. We're not attorneys. We're not accountants. I cannot give you any legal advice, but I could give you a couple of ideas that you might want to talk to your lender about, i.e. deferment programs or whatever. Well, unfortunately, most of the callers are not going to be able to qualify for deferment. They may qualify for a short sale, but in all likelihood, not so, because they're already in foreclosure. But we want to give these people right up front that, look, we're here to help you. Um, if you're needing to move on, if, you know, someone's passed away, someone's lost a job, somebody's got a divorce, that's one of the first questions we ask them when they respond to our letters. Tell us about your situation. In fact, if y'all, if anybody, if anybody's listening with a pad, you may want to write this one down. Tell us about your situation so that we can perhaps help you the best. And they tell us their situation. And, you know, I'm not out to take advantage. I tell you, I've learned this. If I help enough other people solve their problems, whether it's foreclosure or any other problem, then me and my team, we just don't have to worry about ourselves. And you know what? When we talk to these sellers or these owners that are in foreclosure, they're already stressed out. And when they get somebody on the phone that actually is genuinely concerned, what a breath of fresh, fresh air for them. Mm -hmm. So what you said was you can't help someone up a hill without getting closer to the top yourself. Is that what I've never you said that, but that's a great way to put it. You're exactly right. So Perfect. you want to you want to do your business so you can sleep at, at night, and that means that you don't take advantage of people when you have the opportunity. However, you do let them make decisions on what's best for them instead of you trying to. Make decisions on what's only best for you. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Right. You know, um, and just one more sec on that. I, I tell people in the foreclosure business, a lot of cases on every deal that we do or every situation or person that we help that's in foreclosure, there can be as many as four different wins in that transaction. And here's the four wins. Number one, you buy someone and they're in foreclosure. I actually, you know, a lot of times they'll say they'll, they'll sell it to us for what they owe. And a lot yeah, of times, depending normal. on the spread, I'll give them $500 or $1,000 to help them move and get back on their feet. But here's the four wins in a nutshell. Number one, we help somebody get out of foreclosure and get on with their life and move somewhere else and, and let that get behind them. Number two, if I buy that house with private money, that's a win for the private lender to get a high rate of return. Number three, if I sell that house on rent to own or lease purchase, now I've helped another family that couldn't buy a home any other way because we had a program for them. And then, of course, number four is it's us, the real estate entrepreneur that put all that together. Well, you also saved a lot of properties from foreclosure and helped out the banks, and therefore you helped out their shareholders, and you help out appraisers and contractors and all the people involved in the middle, but I don't think anybody cares. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't get any credit for the. Can you imagine 
what this society would be like if it weren't for us investors putting these houses back into the marketplace? Mm. Well, It'd be a mess, wouldn't it? It, it would be a mess, and uh, and and quite frankly, there would still be a lot of houses on the market that um, you know that we as real estate investors we've been a part of, of moving those houses and, and 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 you know keeping it moving, and getting them occupied. All right. So back to the basics. You got somebody at the courthouse. They look these names up, a few a week, stick them into a database, and then you have somebody sitting at home writing these letters based on what the database kicks out as to whom gets what letter when. Exactly. And then, and then they, when they call, they, they call into your office, and um, I guess you probably direct them to Pat Live when you're not in the office. Am I correct? <clears throat> yeah. In fact, these eight letters, the first letter is very soft. Second letter is still soft. Third letter through the eighth letter, the time clock is running out. And so mm -hmm. from the time it's going to go to sale. And so on the first, oh, and by the way, we do not send any kind, I learned this the hard way years ago. We do not send any kind of postcards to these people right. indicating any kind of distress they may be in. Absolutely because, not. Oh, I that's mean, that's a good point. I never well, if you want to piss people off, that's a good way to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So every letter that we send them, and in fact, each envelope is different. We got eight different envelopes <laughs> on each letter, uh, and they're all hand addressed with a live postage stamp on them. And so the first letter starts out very soft. You know, uh, we, we learned through public records that you may uh, have a desire to sell your house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When we get into the third and fourth letter, then we're a little more direct to where we've learned through uh, public records that your property may have been or may be in the foreclosure process. And here are the following solutions that we perhaps could offer you. And if you want to even keep your house, we can discuss uh, ideas. And then we talk about in another letter, um, if we purchase your house, we have free credit repair that we can uh, pay for you as well. So we know these people need credit repair because they're in foreclosure. But um, as I say, the, the, like in North Carolina, from the time, and this is going to vary state by state, but in North Carolina, <clears throat> from the time someone is issued a notice of default, some states it's a summons, then we have a window of time where the owner of the property has a window of a time of about four weeks before the hearing. So they go before the uh, clerk of the court. And it's in that meeting that the clerk of the court decides if the bank or mortgage company has got the legal right and documents in place to proceed with the foreclosure. The, uh, the attorney with the substitute trustee law firm that the lender has hired shows up to the hearing. Unfortunately, most of the time, the owner of the property does not show up to the hearing. But nonetheless, from that point in time after the hearing, then it's approximately another four weeks, three to four weeks, before the sale date uh, is actually scheduled. So we only have a six to eight week window of time to uh, get up with these people and offer solutions to them. So that's why we mail the letters three business days apart. Yeah, that's definitely going to vary state to state. In Florida, you can call it six months, not six weeks. Right. <laughs> so spread them out a little bit. And yeah, in, in some Texas, states are a lot worse than that. Well, in Texas, they have an express line for foreclosures. In Texas, you can almost foreclose on somebody quicker than you can evict someone on them. Well, having that, to get that out. used to be the case, but they changed that rule last year. They they got it takes them about two and a half months now to get them out. There you go. Take 21, 21 days. Still a right. short window. <laughs> right. Short window. Very short. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> but as you said, um, you know, the, the, the time is going to vary by the state. Ron, if I could take just a moment um, on, on the 30,000 foot view, I know we don't have time here on the podcast to really drill down deep, but from the 30,000 foot view, there's five steps in this foreclosure system. And here's the five steps. Step one, get the foreclosure list and maintain it. And of course, we do that at the courthouse. Step number two is market to motivated sellers. Well, that's our eight letter direct mail campaign. Step number three is talk to the seller once they've responded to the marketing 
and negotiate the deal, make offers, the solutions. Step number four, close on the property. Step number five, there's multiple exit strategies. You know, you mm-hmm. can stay in the deal. Um, now, now the, I'll tell you now, in this world of foreclosures, and you taught us about subject to, the, uh, buying subject to the existing note. Never heard about that until nine years ago. So when we're talking to someone in foreclosure, obviously they have a mortgage or they would not be in foreclosure. So that triggers me and my team, my acquisitionist, to immediately, not immediately, but once we determine the owner does want to sell, and does want relief by us buying the property. Since they have a mortgage, it immediately triggers us to talk with them about buying the property subject to the existing note. And then since the house is in arrears, and I know this is an advanced strategy that may not sound very clear on the surface, but since we're in the world of private money, we will use private money to bring the payments current, keep them current, and do any kinds of repairs or renovations that we need to do in order to sell the property. You so, are a second mortgage, not a yeah, first. second mortgage, second mortgage. Right. Bring so, the first current, leaving in place because it's going to be cheaper than the private money. Absolutely, absolutely. The subject two deals that we're buying now, a lot of them are in the four to four and a half percent interest rate, maxing out at around five percent. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's a combination strategy people can use. The, the reason I brought that up is in this world of foreclosure, there's more than one way to fund the deal. Yeah. Well, that's also a good way, a good place for those private lenders you run across that do not have big chunks of money. Exactly. You need small chunks of money here. <laughs> yep. That's where we use our private lenders that may have only twenty five or $30,000 uh, mm-hmm. of private money. So we'll use that money in second position, as you said, bring payments current keep them current, and market the house. Well, Jay, I've got to, I got to put a couple of warnings in here because we're talking about foreclosures, which is a, um, a group of people that are a protected species in many states. So before you do anything in the world of foreclosures, you must find out what the foreclosure rules are in your state and make sure you uh, comply with them. For example, I know that in Washington state, you can't mail to people that are in foreclosure. Correct. So want to know that before you actually violate the law. And mm-hmm. then in many states, you have a special contracts such as Florida and California and others that you have to use to uh, per- the purchase and sale agreements because they're in foreclosure and sometimes three days uh, right of rescission when they're in foreclosure and so forth. So make sure you get that together. Won't take long. Just ask any attorney or anybody that's in the know, and you'll find out what the rules are. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Ron, because when I started in the foreclosure business, like we're talking about, the <laughs> the cheapest money I could have invested to start out is I hired my real estate attorney to sit down with me. Then we sat down for an hour, hour and a half, and I said, look, pretend I know nothing at all about the way foreclosures work in North Carolina. I said, in fact, you don't have to pretend. I don't know. I don't know anything about how foreclosures work in North Carolina. Tell me how it works from start to finish, et cetera. And, uh, of course, (laughs) Ron, I've heard you say in all my lands, you know, one way to find out how the foreclosure business works in your state is stop making your mortgage payments, and you'll find out. But I don't recommend that route. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not highly suggest. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, seriously, uh, highly recommend everybody do do what I did. Um, get your real estate attorney to uh, go over it with you from start to finish, and then I'll tell you something else that we did as well. Carol, Joy, and I called ahead, set an appointment with the clerk of the court clerk of the Superior Court uh, at our local courthouse, and we had the same appointment. We went over there to the courthouse. We sat down. We say, look, we're here to serve people and to help people that are in foreclosure, and we talked about how we can help them, all right, and we have no idea how this process works here in the, uh, in the courthouse. Can you walk us through it step by step? And you know, when you walk in with that kind of attitude, of like mm-hmm. being humble and not pretending to like know what's going on when you don't know nothing that's going on. Right. It was our it was our experience that the people working at the courthouse really are there to help you when you, yep. they know you are there to help people that are in foreclosure and that you're actually asking for help. 
Exactly. And I'm asking for help because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. People always want to help. Yep. All right. Well, Jay, I know you are giving our listeners some additional training here at no additional cost. So can you tell us how and what? Absolutely. So I've got a free, no cost whatsoever, um, online class that's on demand. I'm going to give you the website here. You can just go simply to the website and the free class is there um, uh, ready for you to watch. What this class is about is these five steps that I just went over. I dive deep into actually what happens in each of these steps uh, so you don't miss out, you know, on the really important points of following through and getting the system to work for you as well. So here's the website for the free online class. Uh, it's www.thementorpodcast.com forward slash all in lowercase foreclosure. So one more time. Foreclosures. Plural. And foreclosures. Actually, I, I was checking it out before we got on here. Either one works. <laughs> Either one works. Okay. And don't forget the the, the yeah, the mentor podcast. Yeah. 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 This is Dot Ron's uh, podcast here. Yeah. www. Dot the t h e the mentor podcast. Dot com forward slash all in lowercase foreclosures. Perfect. Okay. And so that's uh, what do you think that is? Hour, hour and a half worth. Of Actually, that's a pretty point. short one. That's a pretty short one for me. Uh, this uh, particular class is just a little bit over an hour. A little bit over an hour. Okay. Well, that's good information. All right. Is there any? Um, is there any something brilliant you can tell our listeners before we get off of this podcast? I sure or, can. Do you, do you know anything brilliant, Jay? I do know something brilliant, but the only reason I know it is because I experienced it. The most important advice I can give, particularly to a new real estate investor, is do not, do not, do not attempt to do this business starting out on your own. Get a mentor. Um, I went to Ron's uh, boot camp nine years ago, as you all heard me say. I got a mentor to work with me step by step. If I hadn't had a mentor working with me in this business as I started out, I would have thrown away in the trash can a $225,000 profit deal that I bought subject to. But if I didn't have a mentor, I would have missed the deal. So, yeah, there's my brilliance. Get a mentor, particularly if you're starting out. What you're trying to say is that trying to do it yourself and learn it all on yourself is very, very costly and getting help is a lot cheaper. Well, uh, here's the deal. You're going to pay for the education in either case. It's just going yeah. to be a whole lot less expensive if I pay someone that's already gone through the minefields, already mm -hmm. has the experience versus me going out there to a bunch of seminars that I didn't plan on going to. Wish somebody would have told me that 36 years ago. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have mattered. I wouldn't have listened anyway. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter. All right. Well, Mr. Jay, thank you for taking your time here today. And if you guys, um, uh, if you can get uh, all kinds of information about Ron LeGrand, if you want to, by going to ronlegrand.com, a bunch of free stuff on there. And Ron's free book. You can get my book at ronsfreebook.com. Download my real estate book. And there's, of course, a chapter in there on private lending as well. And, uh, in fact, it's, it's literally a, a whole real estate course within a book. Uh, Jay, I appreciate you, sir. You uh, are always a pleasure to talk to. And what we did not tell them that you, is that you actually participate in all of our Quick Start Real Estate Schools, our four-day training events. Absolutely. Not only are you there to help teach, but you actually take one of the buses out and teach people all about rehabs, which you happen to be pretty good at. Yep. Uh, how many rehabs have you done to date? Well, we've done over 350 rehabs. Of course, we've done more deals than that, but we've rehabbed over 350 of them. And uh, right now, I was thinking about it this morning, we've got eight houses under renovation right now simultaneously. But here's the deal, folks. You know, if you're if you're interested in rehabbing, you know, Ron, myself, we can tell you a lot about it. But if you're not interested in rehabbing, then, of course, you know, Ron's got the pretty house business that doesn't involve that. But, yes, I do one of the buses. Thank you for having me do that. And, and in fact, um, I think I've lost count almost as to how many of your quick starts I've been to. <laughs> uh, you're well over 60. I know that. Yes, but the one coming up in a couple of weeks is going to be number 65. Uh, we, we, uh, we always tell everybody that just means you're a slow learner. That's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you, sir. We are out of time on this podcast. And thank everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you on the next episode of The Mentor.
That's all for this edition of the Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.